So tool mark evidence. What is a tool mark? Well, a tool mark is an impression, scratch, gouge, cut, or abrasion made when a tool is brought into contact with an item, leaving an impression of the tool. So it's a mark left behind by the tool. When possible, what we want to do is collect the object that has the tool mark on it. So let's say that we find a padlock that has been cut with bolt cutters. Collect the padlock. Because what the criminalist wants to do is compare the bolt cutters that you later put into evidence with the actual marks on the padlock. So they want to have the original padlock. Now, if for some reason we cannot collect the object that has the mark on it, then we will cast the tool mark. So when we have a tool mark, what do we do? We document. We add it to our notes. We give it an item number. That uh, We take photographs. We add it to our sketch, keeping the same number. Property report as well. We're going to eventually collect that item, or if we do a cast, we'll collect the cast and we'll put it in a labeled container, seal it properly, initial and date the seal. So casting, let's say we do need to cast, I'll demonstrate. We label a container just before collecting an object. We're gonna seal it right after we collect. If we are collecting like a tool mark in wood, something like that, there may be some loose material from the impression. So what we wanna do is clean that out without disturbing the impression if possible. What I like to do is have a little can of dust off, these little compressed air cans, and from a little bit of a distance, give it a little squirt, see if I can blow out anything that's in that impression. Then don't start too close because you don't wanna damage anything and then go ahead and cast. And what the criminals will want is, if you have to cast more than once, submit all the casts, uh, even if the first one kind of messed up, and you can label it in you know, first attempt, second attempt, label it as item number 14A, 14B, and make it clear what you've done. So how do we cast? Let's say that I have an item of evidence, and we'll say it's this doorknob. Now, this is a, a kind of a bogus example because if you had a doorknob, what would you do? You'd remove it from the door and you'd take that as evidence if it has marks on it. And we often will find marks on doorknobs. Bad guys will use big channel lock pliers to twist the doorknob off or to break the lock locking mechanism by twisting the doorknob. So on this, that's what we have. We actually have some markings right here. And you should be able to see those markings right there. So not only is there a dent, but there are these parallel little grooves that were made by the channel lock pliers. Then on this side, we have the same thing for the other side. All right, so what we, let's say that this is an object, not a doorknob, it's something else that we really can't remove. So we're going to go ahead and cast it. Now I wanna to try to keep this from rolling, but let me back up a little here and show you what we use for casting. There's more than one product out there. And this is a micro sill which is really good for single use stuff. Now there's another type that use like an extruder gun. So you actually have this silicon material and the hardener in two different tubes. And when you pull the trigger, it mixes in the nozzle and comes out. Now, when you open up the microsill, it has a little card here for mixing. It has hardener. And then in here, it's got a fresh tube of microsill. And then it will also come with a few tongue depressors. All right, so how do we use this? Well, we need one tongue depressor per application. 
We need our microsill, our hardener, our mixing surface. So here's what we do. I wanna go ahead and mix up something to, to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the microsill and I need to puncture the opening here. All right. And now on this card, I'm going to put a strip of microsill. Now, sometimes it'll put a lot of liquid out first. This time it put a little bit, but not a lot. All right, so there is a strip of microsill. Now I put the cap on right away. So I can use that later on another attempt. Then I have the hardener and I go ahead and open that. Now this has a smaller opening. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put a second strip right down the side here. And you make it the same length as the first one, that's a little longer, because that'll be just the right amount to mix. So I'm gonna put the cap back on right away. So I can use it for the next one. Then you go ahead and take your tongue depressor and you mix the two. What you want to do is mix until most of the blue goes away. Now it's starting to set up. It's starting to harden. So you don't want to take too long because if you do, it'll just be too hard to put on your evidence. So now I have my item of evidence here. And what I want to do is take my tongue depressor, scoop up some of this, and then just put it over the tool mark. So I had more than enough there and that should do it. So what I'm going to do now is just let this dry and after it dries, we'll uh, take a look at it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our microsill. So this is for the tool mark. And basically when you have it done, and I would have my gloves on, but I just took them off for the break. You just, just lift it up on one of the edges and it just comes right off. And it just comes right off, so he says. So there was our tool mark and here is our impression. So I think it might be a little hard to see the detail there, but it's there. Hard for you to see, but I can see a lot of detail. So this would be something that, of course, would be looked at under a microscope and it would be a comparison microscope. The criminalist would have different ways of doing this. If it's a cast, what they will sometimes do is take the suspect tool, make a mark with it in something like lead that's fairly soft, and then they'll cast that and they'll compare the two casts, or they may just look at it. Depends on the, the individual. You just go ahead and put this into a shallow box and go ahead and label the box or the package you put the box in. 